Hey everybody! Welcome back to the Lion Place of Binding of Isaac Atrith. Plus, easy wins last time, sort of. Bonehard carried us. And we did sort of need it. Oh, duality's kind of interesting. Uh, otherwise, this is a very average start with a little bit of above average damage. I can live with that. Five extra bombs as well, which is actually awesome. Tinted rocks on the first floor can be a huge accelerant to success. Or to failure, you know, depending on the way that you are able to use them or not use them, or abuse them, you know, as they said in Eurythmics. Some of them want to be... Dude, I want to write jingles, okay? Because, like, I really think CNN could use something like that. Some of them want the newsroom. Some of them want to hear news by you. I'm sorry, Tomo. His ears are, like, fully back. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, okay? So I haven't talked about DAE programming in a little while. The reason behind it is because I am actually off for the summer. And it is a dream come true, by the way. It's the most appreciative I've ever been about a summer vacation. I had to drop a class to get it. I'm just too busy. Anytime anyone says I'm too busy, I feel like it comes across as, like, you know, Oh, you're busy. Well, thank God Granddad didn't think that way when he stormed Juno Beach back in 44. Okay, sure. All right. I'm not fighting in the Second World War. That's There's a great tweet that's like, you know, whenever anybody invokes that comparison, I'm like, that's the best thing ever. You think when, you know, Granddad's out there, Omaha Beach, I know you're like, what's Juno Beach? Sorry, I'll Americanize the, the reference. He's like... Man, I can't wait so I can do this. So I can lord this over my grandchildren later for every single one of their petty complaints forever. That's definitely what's going through his head. Anyway, I'm really busy. And I, I it's not even like, hey, I'm busy, I can't come hang out. It's more like I'm busy and I'm going to be this way until I die unless I change things. So, uh, yeah, I dropped a class. I didn't want to. It felt like... And, you know, this is, again, my own personal thing. It felt like I was being a failure by dropping a class. Um, you just literally do not have the time. So I'm on a summer vacation, but I'm still peeping my university website once every couple of days because I wrote this final exam, submitted a final project, and did a final presentation that were all due on the same day. That day was 15 days ago as of the time of this recording. So it's probably, you know, who knows if the situation is resolved by the time this goes up a couple days after that. I went to my university website, and by the way, this website and app are so bad for a, a university that's training computer programmers. It's comical. It's like the college can't afford to hire its own graduates or something. <laughs> There's talented students and faculty here. Why on earth is the infrastructure online so bad? It's like, you know, Sandwich University having a Quiznos in it or something. It just seems backwards. It seems like that's the one thing you should have under control. Anyway, I'm totally taking Guppy's head, obviously. Um, because I love it and it's great and Guppy is my son. Again, no offense, Tomo. And I got a little alert when I went to the website and it was like, your marks are in. Click on it. Final project? Not marked. Final exam? Not marked. What you did mark was my final presentation. It was a five minute presentation I did two and a half weeks ago. Got on stage. Yeah, socket I.O. enables a two-way simultaneous real-time communication between the front end and the back end. The server and the client can communicate events to one another. I was like, of course it's going to be 100. Like, the whole reason this project exists is to buff up the grades for the people who have gotten poor marks on other projects. I really, I almost expected it to be marked by the time that I finished, you know? Take it from someone who's been a teacher. Presentations are the greatest thing to mark. An essay, you've got to proofread yourself. If you hate proofreading, imagine doing it for 30 people that are less intelligent than you. I don't mean that as a superiority thing, but if you're teaching English to children, you should be smarter than them. <laughs> they may well become smarter than you in the near future, but that's why you're the teacher and they're the student. And then on top of that, you got to write comments. Good job, Billy. I really liked your cogent point. Blah, blah. Next time, consider spelling things correctly. B plus, you know? Presentation, you just go, great job, you know, 
Keep up the good work. Good luck. You know, work on your slides. Put less text on your slides. You're good to go. Here's your mark. So we're getting it. It's been over two weeks. The exam is not like... It shouldn't be hard to mark. That's all I'm saying, okay? Probably just run it through some kind of linter. And then be like, it ticks off these things, doesn't tick off these things, you get a 70. When do you riot, okay? That's the question I'm asking. Two weeks, which is where we're at right now, is probably a little too early to start rioting and emailing and being like, hey dog, where's the marks? But, I don't think we're too far off. What's your perspective on the issue? I don't, and by the way, this, these are part-time studies. I don't expect the teacher who also has like a real job. <laughs> that sounded so offensive. A day job, okay. Trust me, I'm not in any position to give anybody the real job speech, but uh, you know, he also has like a day job. I'm not gonna email him and be like, hey dude. Oh my God, Creative Cloud. Life's busy, huh? I want my exam back. But, you know, I think we're kind of approaching. If we hit three weeks or a month, that's when I'm gonna start to be emailing like the professor and the school and being like, this is a little ridiculous. In the whole scheme of things, it doesn't even make that big of a difference. I know I did okay. It's just the fact that it's hanging over my head every day and I gotta go to this crappy website. I'm sorry to wake you, Tomo. I tried to shout it away from you. I gotta go to this crappy website every day just to be disappointed. There's been like eight scheduled maintenance posts since the last grade was posted. Yeah, give me the... Yeah, 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 yeah. I like a lot of this stuff. We're gonna start with Holy Grail because it gives us the ability to fly. I may not fight both angel statues right now. We're gonna get a second chance. This is the reason, by the way, is because... Not sure if you've noticed, but the first fight is not going all that well. <laughs> I'd rather, if possible, use our bombs for nefarious combat purposes if we can do so. We could have taken Seraphim as well, and that might have been a better choice. But, you know, we, we, we got a certain vow of allegiance to ourselves. Can't blow those up. Alright, let's get the heck out of town. I'm just saying, it's a long wait. He's got other things going on in his life. I'm late at submitting some things sometimes, I can understand. Not with school, those are my number one priority, but you know, Dead Cells episodes, but dum bum -tsh. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again. And then we'll just fade away from that and segue into something else. Eventually. Hey, stop that. Did you see... Dude, I'm of two minds about this anecdote, by the way. Because it happened in Vancouver. You probably didn't see it, because it happened in the CFL, though. Um, no offense meant, of course, to all the Canadian viewers, of which I am technically one of them, I suppose. Um, there was a fan that jumped onto the field at a BC Lions game. American-style football. He's running around on the field, just generally being a nuisance and kind of a jerk, right? Right? I'm on the field! I'm not supposed to be on the field! Isn't that cool? Doesn't that make me cool? I'm on the field! Basically like a Rick and Morty bit, right? And, uh... Hey, grab this. I'm just joking about the Rick and Morty thing. Everybody relax. Slow your roll. I read the New Yorker article on Dan Harmon. He's a sympathetic and body character. Get that out of here. Um, so, you know, the security guys are trying to tackle him. Or at least restrain him, I should say. But he's just being kind of a jerk about it. You can't catch me! I'm an adult! Isn't that funny? Isn't it funny I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do? Um, then, something snaps in one of the BC Lions players. He's an athlete. He's a tackling machine. That's what he trains for every day of his life. He rears back, takes a run at the dude, and basically just human missiles him. Knocks him onto his side. It's beautiful. Because you're watching a man who should know better do something very, very dumb. And 
the only reason you do something, like, there's no, literally, there's no other reason for attention, right? What's the other reason? Even in the most absurd straw man argument I could present, I can't, well, what if he was trying to raise awareness for, he wasn't, he was running around being a, being a bit of a, bit of a knob. See, you can say British, British swear words without Google DeepMind understanding them because it's an American company. Um, so I'm of two minds. Very similar to what I talked about, by the way, of the video of that like 12 or 11 year old kid being a real piece of garbage. And I'm not, if you saw the video, you'd be like, you don't mince words. <laughs> he was being more than a piece of garbage. And then the grown man kind of like, you know, pushes him, grabs him by the throat, pushes him down. And then the kid goes, he pushed me. The kid so deserved it. And it takes a real piece of garbage to get me to say that. Anyway. But I am of two minds about it. You know? The dude that jumped onto the field, being a real jerk, at the same time, that's kind of like undue force to respond to him. Now, again, I want to make a distinction between things. I've been watching a lot of true crime documentaries. Most common conversation that comes up, is this person innocent or are they, are they guilty, you know? The evidence looks suspicious, but there's also holes in the prosecution case. Do you think uh, Stephen Avery did it? Do you think Brandon Dassey did it? Do you think Michael Peterson did it? Do you think, uh, I forget his last name, but Ahmed from Serial. Uh, Hold on one second. Serial podcast. Adnan, that's it. To get new murder trial. Anyway, I'll read into this later. Adnan Syed, that's it. Um, you know, I have the same answer to all three of those questions. But there's a difference, and it's important to denote. You can say whether it is you think they did or they didn't do it. As long as you're not on the jury. On the jury, you have to have a reasonable level of doubt in order to convict them. And I would argue that in all those cases, that was not... That threshold was not passed. Is what I mean to suggest. Either way, as a human being, if the dude who got tackled at the BC Lions game sues the organization and goes, They tackled me when I was being a jerk. Sure, I was being a jerk. But I don't think they should have tackled me. On a personal level, I'm going to be like, Well, if you don't want to get tackled by a football player, try not jumping onto a football field in the middle of a professional football game. But I guess, you know, on a on a legal level, I'm not a lawyer or a judge. You know, there could be a, a precedent for the fact that they crossed the line. Either way, we're in the best position, which is that we just get to watch and enjoy the fallout from this guy being a total idiot. I love it. I was wondering, and I, I had to look this up. It, this is, it was a very rigorous chain of anecdotes that led to this realization that this thing had happened. I didn't just find it on like Bleacher Report or something like that. Heavens no. Um, Kate and I went out to buy groceries. When we were driving, you know, it was a Saturday at like 10.30. Like, why is it so busy? We live in a pretty big city by Canadian standards. Um, but it's still much, much busier. I'm not taking any of that garbage, by the way. Also... There, you just can't give me... <laughs> you can't give me access to an angel room there? That's great. Because of the way that the room was set up. Who thought of that design? Really hope someone was fired for that blunder. Um, but even still, you know, there were way more people outside than we're used to being on a Saturday night. Even in the, the summer when the tourism season is kicking. Later we found out, you know, I looked it up, the BC Lions were playing. Okay, I don't know if it was the season opener, but it was, it was early in the season nonetheless. And I found that anecdote. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> I've never felt compelled to do anything like that. The closest I've ever come, when I lived in Korea, I went to a few soccer games. And one time, one of the stadiums was doing like, if you get on the Jumbotron, you get a free Pizza Hut personal size pizza. Dude, I'm gonna check here, by the way. This is a very dicey, but okay, I'm, I'm for it. But we are going to lose the effectiveness of the golden stuff. If we go back in, we want to get the pennies. We're going to take damage on the way out. We're going to compromise our deal with the devil chance. So I'm just going to abstain. And I'm going to say that it was worth it 
for the scientific tiers, but... Uh, I knew going into this Pizza Hut Jumbotron deal, by the way, that we had a distinct advantage. Because we were the only non-Koreans that I could see in the entire stadium. I was like, if we make a fool of ourselves, we're getting on the Jumbotron. Even if it's only because they're going to be like, look at the silly foreigners. So I started dancing. And just like, losing my mind doing Generation X style crop, uh, crotch chops. Guess who got the personal pizza? You know it was me. I wasn't even... You know, sometimes when people win something at an arena, they're like, what? Not at all. Wasn't even close. I was like, it's written in the stars that I was going to get that pizza. I had so many advantages going into it. Anyway. That's the closest I've come to doing something stupid at an arena. But that was, that was sanctioned. Otherwise, I'm on my best behavior. I always feel like everyone in the arena is a cop. And I don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers. Plus, you know, let them enjoy the game. Or whatever they came to see. Roger Waters live at the Rogers Arena. I got no idea. Too many Rogers for me, to be honest. But I've seen stupid stuff happen at the arena. I've seen people... Uh, routinely, people get kicked out of Rogers Arena at Canucks games. Doesn't happen that often, but, like... It's not rare. Let's put it that way. It's not like three times a game you'll see it. It's always weird to me, like... Whenever... This is not meant to be a discussion about, you know, the legalization of any one particular drug, by the way. And if you take it as that, well, hey, I can't stop you. I enjoy adult beverages. But whenever somebody does something stupid on alcohol, and I'm going to use the same terminology people use for other drugs, people go, well, you can't blame the drug for the stupid thing that, it, that this person did. You know, I use the drug and I use it responsibly. But whenever it comes to speaking about any other drug, that logic for whatever reason no longer applies. <laughs> it could impair you when you drive. It's the pot calling the kettle black, my friend. You, the, I don't know if I'd say any drug, because honestly, I'm just ignorant of it. But there's, you know, so some you can use responsibly, some you can't use responsibly. A lot of it comes down to the person. I can't believe we got a deal. We had a 2% chance. Are you kidding me? That's incredible. I like alcohol. But it is also evil. And I don't know, it, it, it just surprises me that it gets a free pass in so many situations when it kind of encourages people to act like a jerk. Hey, put the blame where it lies, on the person. But also, that element of that person may be exacerbated a little bit by having 12 Molson Canadians before they went to the game. See it all the time at these NHL games, you know, it's a tradition to get absolutely hammered. Went to a, the game we went to uh, in, it's probably January. It was the best seats I've ever had in my entire life. They were given to us by a, a close friend. We watched the game with him right next to the penalty box. Like one row, literally one row up from the glass. Some of the best tickets in the entire house, I can imagine. The dude next to us was so hammered, he was eating these peanuts and just throwing the shells everywhere, which I've since been told is not actually, like, that ridiculous to do at a, at a sports game, but we don't do it here, so I don't know where he's from. But you have breached Canadian etiquette. And then, too, too trash to watch the third period. It was like a 6-1 game. It was The Canucks won four games last season. It was one of them. Probably the best one. The Kings took a penalty because they uh, boarded Brock Besser, our 14-year-old scoring superstar. He came off the bench on the power play, instantly ripped one top shelf. It was a dream come true. They didn't get to see that because they were too hammered. Just slow your roll. <laughs> Those are probably like $500 tickets. You had one too many $8 beers and ruined it. What are you doing? Anyway. Long story short, I'm just saying, you know, I, I, I can't say for certain that the dude at the BC Lions game was under the influence of alcohol, but I'm just saying, I think I would be more surprised if he weren't than I would be if he were. 
And of course, the other thing that I'm obviously saying is all drugs should be legalized, especially crocodile. If I can't get crocodile and fentanyl mixed together... Okay. This is where people that are well-meaning go, NL, stop. Stop. You're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Michael, stop. You get the idea. What I'm getting at is I'm making an absurd exaggeration to show that I'm not actually pushing a position on you, merely talking about something that I think is relatively non-controversial, suggesting that it sometimes makes more reasonable people do unreasonable things. I would love to just go to the boss fight and maybe get uh, boss rush. I really don't think we can. I think we gotta... First off, I shouldn't be playing this guy as much as I am, but that's life, right? Um, I want him to pay out. He paid out with something probably bad. We did get a, a third tiers upgrade. We're not going to be able to make boss rush unless we pop our emperor card. I think that's fine. We're not going to pop our emperor card. Dude, our rate of fire is amazing now. This run will be a win, but it, it was much more delicate than it looked like originally. I have to see. Nah. Yeah, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I hate to lose an Emperor card just because it's like... It's a nice bonus, you know? You're like, okay, it's like one free floor. All I have to do is beat one of the easiest rooms on the floor, aka the boss. Don't hate because I'm telling the truth. And uh, I can move along. But Yera is like, it's probably a lot of free items, so sure, I'm willing to do it. I'm not saying, by the way, that alcohol should be illegal. What I'm saying, what are you, by the way? I'm saying that we should hold it to a higher standard. You know? And we should hold ourselves to a higher standard as well. Maybe. I don't know. I always try to loop it back to some overarching, like, moral of the story, but it doesn't always fit. I'm kind of interested in actually, like, buying the spirit heart and then getting another spirit heart and just converting. Puts us in a much nicer position for HP. I was then going to see if we had, like, a 7 cent item, which we obviously do not. But this still went pretty well. We made our decision to, uh play more conservatively as things got closer to the end of this floor, and I, I stand by that decision greatly, even still to this present day. Absolutely. Even still to this present day, the day that I'm recording this on. <laughs> so Kate and I have been watching a lot of uh, stand-up on Netflix. She previously had almost no experience watching stand-up comedy. And then when she found out that she existed, or... <laughs> The truth comes out. Well, when uh, she found out it existed, she was like, it's just people on stage telling made-up stories. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, but they're made up. And I'm like, yeah, that's not... They're just a vessel to, like, filter the joke. And she was like, oh, I get it now. So she's been watching a ton. And I realized, dude, if you're a stand-up comic, cutting a trailer for your show is impossible. You know, Netflix has... 15 to 30 second trailers for all their specials. Every single one makes me hate the comedian that's in it. Even if I like them. Because 15 seconds is not enough time to build up a joke. It's barely enough time to even get a punchline out there. So what ends up happening is you're like, Please welcome to the stage, Dave Chappelle! And then he says, you know, So I popped her in the face! And you're like, wow, that's... That's abhorrent. And when you watch the actual special, you know, you're like, oh, there's a lead-up to it, and there's context, and there's, like, of all the genres, I think stand-up comedy, obviously, this isn't gonna work too well. Let me out. I thought that might trigger the boss rush. I think stand-up comedy's got the hardest uphill battle with a trailer. Because the other thing is, I know that some people have said things like, well, you know, I don't like watching trailers for movies, because the trailers give a lot away. I understand where you're coming from. There have definitely been times where a trailer has come out for something, and then I read, like, the reaction to the trailer on the internet, and some genius, because I never piece this together myself. I never really try. Um, some genius is like, well, if you put the pieces in this order, 
this is how the movie will go down. This will happen, this will happen, this is the climax, then the, the sundering, and then they get back together, and this is what happens at the end, and it leads into this. Particularly, of course, I'm speaking about Marvel right now. Especially because there's like a, you know, the, the comics provide kind of a, a shell for that stuff to be filtered through. So you kind of know to some extent, like, the themes of what's going to happen. I'm not really like that, you know, when I see it, I'm like, oh, I have no idea what's going on, but that looks kind of cool. Let's go see it. You, can, you, you can't Yera a Yera, as we've said many times. But in stand-up comedy, you're gonna like watch a trailer and be like, I like that joke. And then you're gonna turn on the special. Somewhere between 15 and 45 minutes later, you're gonna hear the joke again. Did you like it that much? <laughs> I don't know. This joke's so nice, you heard it twice in 45 minutes. That's a little, uh, it's gotta be pretty darn good is all I'm saying. And then there's all the, do you guys ever see like the Netflix machine generated trailers that just takes like uh, a few clips from the thing and then puts whatever the genre of music most suited for it behind it is? They don't even have a real trailer that's curated. It's just like some dude walks out on stage and if you ever want the most useless trailer of all time, it's basically, here's what this stand-up comedian looks like. And you're like, oh well. Sorry, not interested for whatever reason. That stuff. It's like you gotta have a trailer to demonstrate the tone and the theme, but at the same time, you're darned if you do, darned if you don't, because your trailer... It's like it goes against the format anyway. This bit is going nowhere. It's pseudo inside baseball. Mmm, pseudo RMRF inside baseball more like, because you institute a memory seg fault on your... That doesn't mean anything. I'll give you a dirty little secret. That doesn't mean anything at all. Dude, I still... I think I talked about it, but, like... People think I, I joke about the plight of the bald man. Being bald is not hard. But there are some things that you wouldn't think about that are actual negatives to baldness. The, the things people think are negatives are very much not negatives most of the time, unless you got a weird head. Which you might, okay? It's just, don't shoot the messenger. Not everybody's got a great head for baldness. Most people, I think, have a better head than they would think that they do for baldness, but the other thing is, for the most part, once it starts happening, it doesn't really matter what your head looks like, you don't have much of a choice. However, Everyone out there is either like nodding or they're laughing and going like, ha ha ha, it won't happen to me. Maybe you're right. Anyway, people are like, people are gonna all make fun of me every day because I'm bald. Well, maybe be the change you want to see in the world, my dude. Stop making fun of bald people. They'll return the favor when you go bald. The baldest person I know is a person I went to college with, lived with them. They made fun of me for being bald. One year after I left college, they were still there because they had taken a year to do an internship, they shaved their head because they started going bald. And they sent me a message and they were like, hey, sorry about all the bald jokes. And I was like, na 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 na. That's not how it works. <laughs> you had your chance. Now, it's even better for me. Because the fact that you made all the jokes means that I know that it bothers you. You've accidentally given me the tools. Anyway, we haven't spoken in years is the thing. Um, the thing that's actually bad about baldness is temperature. Temperature and sun. Your head gets colder than you expect. You can get brain freeze from being outside. You ever wonder why bald people wear hats? That's one reason. It's not just everyone assumes it's just to cover up the fact that you're bald. I could care less. I'm a happily married man. Moreover, I try to appear as invisible as possible in public so as not to draw the attention of my adoring fans and create like a Beatles situation where I'm running down the street and like trying on beef eater hats and ducking into phone books holding a big newspaper in front of my face. I thought love was only true in fairy tales. Yes, I know that's the monkeys. Um, the other thing is the sun. Went biking yesterday, didn't put sunscreen on my head because I was wearing a helmet. And now I have a sunburn on my head in the shape of the holes in my helmet. Extremely not fun, but also, I'll admit, kind of hilarious. If you can't laugh at yourself, you're, you're already doomed. 
That's the hard part. More actually, the the head one is not that bad because you you know the skin's not peeling or anything. The worst is I have a, a sunburn on my knuckles, and those are constantly like my forehead basically stays where it is. My knuckles are constantly bending and moving, and you know it's causing a lot of irritation with that sunburn. I really can't express... When I was a kid, you could tan. I would go outside, and I would tan. I'd, I'd come in, and people would be like, Well, you look like... You got a nice glow. Now, I go outside, and I am a ghost. I really do want to fight Mega Satan, by the way. I was just hoping our four luck would give us a chance to pick up some more items. I go outside, white as a ghost. I come inside, and I have, like red marks anywhere that the sun has been touching I don't really care like I don't know is tanning still a thing when I was in high school all the you know girls in 11th grade 12th grade they were always going to tanning salons and the teachers were like mm, not sure if it's worth getting melanoma to tan and they were like shut up that's hot <laughs> I'm only I'm only half joking like whatever I'll worry about that when I'm 29 oh no <laughs> 2018 is so far away. But yeah, tanning was like, it was really big. Mothers would let their teenage daughters, and I'm assuming sons if they asked, but it's not as common, I suppose. Um, not that there aren't vain men, of course. The point is, this is beside the point. It's not meant to be like a gender-based issue. Because um, tanning was seen as healthy. People knew that tanning was bad for you, but being tanned gave you the appearance of being a healthier person. Doesn't exist for me anymore. I just burn. I don't know why I turned into Al Pacino. Let it burn. Hua, Tomo. Hua. <laughs> he ran faster than I've ever seen him run in my entire life. Hua. Wait, wait, wait. There's the one here. Who are you? Pacino, Pacino, I'm out Pacino. <laughs> That's the who's who are you, except the lyrics are who ah by, you know, Al Pacino's famous impression from Scent of a Woman. And then, I'm really Al Pacino, I'm Alfred Pacino. I'm trying to find the syllables to line up properly, but it's not working out. Who? I. This is terrible. I love it. Hey, 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 you're dead. Beautiful. Dude, this run, by the way, is fine, but it also kind of sucks and I hate it. Um, mostly, I'm, I'm sweating the speed here. You know, 0 0.89 speed is because we took Taurus and the virus. Because I'm some kind of idiot that like t wants to pick up items that you know can do cool things, but also for some reason they all come with speed downgrades in the modern era for reasons unbeknownst. Um, so, like, there's a lot to like. Rate of Fire is amazing. But the Rate of Fire is amazing because of the tears uphill in our rotation and verb. The run could have screwed us. The circumstances ended up coming through. I know the run is the circumstances. I'm just also saying, like, it, it was very easy to miss the tears upgrades. It's not like they existed as one item. So this is not what I would normally consider like a guaranteed slam dunk Mega Satan fight. We did also skip all of our deals with the devil to get deals with the angel. We also hit like a 2% deal with the devil chance, which is comical. But still. Get out of here. I don't care. I'll stand in the fire so you can torch your boys. Once we get through the angel stuff, like, we're pretty much set, but... I'm just saying, the run might look amazing, and it's certainly not bad with 4 rate of fire and 12 damage, but considering the advantages that were available to us and plausible at many points in this run, you might expect it to be a little bit better than it is right now, and that's okay. Also, thank God for the extra red hearts we're getting on occasion here. I've made some terrible mistakes. Were it not for those red hearts, we would be in a very deleterious situation. 
That one, little irritating. Well, I hope I get some luck upgrades before the Mega Satan fight. That's me doing my impression of Dan. Doing his impression of me. Sure hope my jQuery UI works with Linux. Sorry, I had to focus momentarily. For the first time in my adult life, I'm faced with adversity. All right. I'm glad we chose to fight Mega Satan because it was a challenge, but one we were up to. Oh, whoops, I accidentally, oh no, I don't get to go to a void. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. That was a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.